Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Thompson. This is COVID-19 update, March 23rd, 2020. All data is of 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to account for reporting. All videos can be found on roominfo.com slash blog. Current trajectories from March 23rd, 2020 are very similar again to yesterday. You can see the United States growing quickly, as is Spain. And Italy is certainly still the leader. If we zoom into day 11, where Canada is now, we can see we're falling behind the other countries in terms of number of confirmed cases. Okay, Spain is much further ahead. But again, this relies on how much testing a country is doing. Let's look at the reported cases per million population. This is a new graph I'm showing today. And this is Italy, so they're almost 1,000 per million population, or one in 1,000. Here's Spain, Germany, France, United Kingdom, the United States and Canada. So the United States, although growing quickly, doesn't have that many cases per million population. If we zoom into Canada though, at day 11, you can see we're second in terms of reported cases per million population. And I think that's what's gotten everybody concerned today, uh, particularly in Ontario, we had a large jump in the number of cases and um, they have closed now all non-essential businesses. The percentage of deaths uh, is roughly equivalent to yesterday. And here are the numbers of deaths. Spain uh, was the big increase today from 378 to 539. Italy fell a little bit. Uh, France increased, the United States increased, Canada slightly increased, and the United Kingdom was about level. Our growth factors for COVID-19, Canada had a whopping 4.37 today, but I think some of this is reporting error. Yesterday we were quite low at 0 0.57, but it was a Sunday, and I think reporting was off most countries on Sunday, and certainly in Canada. So that's why we're higher today. That should even out over uh, as the week goes on. Average growth factors, Canada was 1.45 today, so we had a big jump. Uh, and the average growth factor over the last three days was 2.06 for Canada. So we're leading everybody in terms of our growth. So a couple of things on terminology you'll, you'll read. SARS-CoV-2, and this is the actual virus, and it stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. So when someone says SARS-CoV-2, they're talking about the virus. When they say COVID-19, they're talking about the disease that's caused by the virus, and that's coronavirus disease 19. All right, so how does this SARS-CoV-2 spread to cause COVID-19? Well, it spreads in respiratory droplets. And one thing to remember is that viruses are like greasy little particles and they love to stick to things. So these little droplets fall on surfaces and these greasy little particles stick to the surfaces. We ask you to stand two meters apart because that's about how far respiratory droplets from a cough or sneeze can travel. So how does it enter the body? Well, it can enter through the eyes, the nose, or the mouth. So what are the riskiest behaviors for catching SARS-CoV-2? Well, there's some behaviors, such as obviously kissing, when you shake someone's hand who is infected, if you share cutlery, cups, straws, water bottles, or cosmetics that are coated with these greasy little particles, if you cough or sneeze directly onto a person, or you touch contaminated surfaces. Now, what environments do you find this? Well, the biggest risk is household contacts. Someone in your house is sick, they leave these viral particles, these greasy little particles all over the place and that's your biggest risk for catching it. Enclosed work environments is another high risk place and anything where a lot of human beings are in close contact, public transit, conge any congestive public spaces. We talk about washing your hands with soap and water and it works great. Why? As I said, viruses are like greasy little particles and soap dissolves the fatty layer that coats the virus. It also undoes the weak bonds holding the viral pieces together. But you have to remember that the skin is quite rough and wrinkly, which is why you need to do a fair amount of rubbing and soaking to ensure the soap reaches every little nook and cranny on the skin surface that could be hiding active viruses. All soaps are about the same. So remember the old adage, Dawn takes grease out of your way, while well, soap takes viruses out of your way. All right, let's get back to the new cases uh, per day here. And remember our bell curve, as the virus is expanding, we get an increase in the new cases per day, then it plateaus, and then the new cases start to fall off. So let's see where we are today, okay? Remember China peaked at 4,000 new cases per day and Korea around eight or 900, okay? Italy, okay, we had a peak here, just over 60, or sorry, over 6,000, and now Italy's fallen for the last couple of days. That's encouraging, okay? Spain. 
We had a drop off yesterday. I'm going to just show you. And I think this is just a Sunday reporting bias. And now we've jumped up again today. And you'll see that in a number of countries. There's Germany, same type of trend. France, United Kingdom, United States has really taken off. And Canada is down here. If we look at the cases per thousand hospital beds, so remember, this is what really gets us in trouble when we exceed our healthcare system's capacity, okay? So France is now just touching 50 cases per thousand hospital beds. Britain's getting close. United States is right there as well. Canada's lagging behind there because we haven't had it as long in our country. There's Germany, there's Spain, and there's Italy. But if we zoom down now on day 11, the concerning thing here as well is we're still in second place for cases per 1,000 hospital beds, and I know that's got a lot of people in our country worried. Now, this is a new graph I'm going to show you today, and what John Byrne Murdoch did here is he broke down the regions in certain countries, and basically Madrid could now pass Lombardia as the worst affected subnational region, but New York's death toll is rising very quickly. This is from two days ago, March 21st. Okay, this is the how coronavirus trajectories compare. This is March 22nd, and now we're into the 23rd. And what he's done today is he's put two lines on the graph. This is where cases double every day, cases double every two days, and cases double every three days. Okay, so you see the US is doubling roughly every two days. They're certainly ahead of Spain, uh, Germany, uh, Italy uh, at this point in time. United Kingdom is down here. If you look down here, you'll see Canada right here and Australia right here. Okay, so Canada is actually separated now, unfortunately, from Australia, and we're doubling roughly about every three days. If you look at coronavirus deaths, and this is from yesterday, okay, I'm going to overlay today's on here, okay, and this is today again. He's done doubling of deaths every two days and every three days. Okay. The U.S. is doubling deaths every three days, even though they're growing fastest because they've got the healthcare capacity to take care of it. Remember, the United States has almost a million hospital beds, right? Where if you compare it to Canada, we've got 60,000 perhaps. So they've got tons of capacity in their healthcare system. Okay. Uh, Spain uh, has broken through their capacity, and that's why their deaths are doubling every couple of days. So remember, folks, this is a crucial time for our country. You need to do your part, flatten the curve for us, stay home, stay safe, and save lives.